Hey everyone, it's uh, Pete Dalladay here, PTBO Canada Headquarters, where it's a lot cozier than our original uh, thought of maybe walking down Hunter Street in East City. It's a little chilly. So we're renaming this segment uh, Coffee with Cash I love on it. the Couch. Yeah. Yeah. So how's Linda Cash doing? What have you been up to since it's been almost a year, not quite a year since we last got It has. Yeah. I think um, I was on my way probably out west. I spent most of last year out west. I did... Uh, a series in Calgary, I did another series in Vancouver, and I did actually a one-woman show in Victoria. Right. Um, so I was strangely busy. The uh, television stuff that I did, I think, was a convenient replacement for uh, American uh, folks that couldn't come up to Canada at the time because of uh, the pandemic, and they also had to um, isolate in right. hotels for two weeks, and I didn't. So um, I, strangely, there was a perk for me because I got uh, roles that I don't think I normally would right. get because um, That's the like Americans myself. That's how up. I got this job. There you go. Yeah, the other people were not available. <laughs> and here I am a year later. Bring in the sub. Sometimes yeah. it works. Some, I, I've been um, second choice many, many times. Yeah. It's okay. It works out. But yes. uh, now I'm focusing on Cluster Fork, which is the, uh, which is the production company that... I co-created with uh, locals Ian Burns and mm -hmm. Pat Maitland, and we've yeah. got our show coming yes. up, which is really terrific because we can yep. finally meet live. So our Pat McKenna from yes. uh, the Red Green Show and yeah. um, one of my best friends, he's yeah. coming to uh, join myself, Meg Murphy, um, Pat Maitland, and then a few locals who have moved to this area who were Second City alums. Which, who you have to meet because they're great. That, yeah, so what, what, when's that all shaken down? That's on Friday night at 8 o'clock at Market Hall. Right. And we are, we, we are selling those tickets. Like, people clearly want to be out and about. Yeah. Okay, I want to I find out more, uh, talk to you a bit more about some of the people you have come across in your years of acting and improv and all the great stuff. So, I say we go over to East City Coffee Shop and go inside this time. Let's do it. Okay. Instead of on their patio. Sound Perfect. Good? Yes. All right, let's go. Home fries! All right, it's a lot cozier over here for sure. Isn't it? Than last time when we were stuck on the patio. All right, so I want to ask you a couple big roles. You've had some big roles. I've I mean, had some big roles. I've been really in Seinfeld. Lucky. You know. I, but I've also had some really close shots to giant right. roles. And when I teach, I, I, I talk to people about, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out when you go for the, like the, the big ring. Right. And I think when I look in retrospect, it was kind of meant to be. I don't know that I was ever supposed to be like way up there, but one of the one of the auditions I did uh, when I lived in LA was yeah. I was up for Frasier. When no. It, it, yes, we yes. Yeah. And um, I did a really good first audition. Right. I'm usually pretty killer. If you hire me right away, it's good. But if you want to see me again, <laughs> it gets a little nervous. So I was pretty flipping nervous, and I was on the Paramount lot. It was between myself, Lori Gilpin, and Lisa Kudrow. All the big wigs were in the room, Kelsey Grammer including Kelsey Grammer. Nice guy, like he was nice to me and everything. But I was yeah. sweating. I was. I could tell. It was like, you know what? I probably should have had a better breakfast. And I saw Mike Myers walking across the lot. It was like, oh, baby, God. It was like, that's Mike Myers. So it becomes right. really surreal. Needless to say, I'm the first one up. I blew it. I blew it. So if you ever blow it because you are nervous, don't yeah. worry about it because I blew Frazier, okay? So it can't get much worse than that. So anyway, uh, Lori Gilpin was there and Lisa Kudrow was there and Lisa Kudrow got the gig. Right. She did the pilot. She then got fired from that gig. Right. And that's when she got friends. And that's when Lori Gilpin got Frasier. And so I always think in retrospect, like, I remember being in the hotel the night before going, oh my God, you know this thing's going to run at least 10 years because yeah. it's Kelsey Grammer. Do I want this? Do I want this right. in my life? And I think ultimately, Did you have kids at this I point? didn't. Did you yes, have, yes. Yeah. I had my daughter in yep. LA. Yep. I had tried looking at the school system. It was depressing me a little bit there. It's a little harder because you got to go private. Yeah. And, um, so it just wasn't meant to be. That's the way you're looking at it. 
little bit. You know what? I, I, what I, I'm pretty Pollyanna about life. Yeah, yeah, like when yeah. stuff happens when you don't expect it and it's not in the in the immediate positive, yeah. there's a reason. Life. Right. All right. So that's a big one. Is there a quick one that you didn't think you were going to get? that you auditioned for and then got that nice sort of call or email and said, Well, Fargo was interesting because I went for Fargo the season before, and again, it was like, I nailed that audition. Yeah. I know I did well in that. You had a good feeling. Didn't hear from them. I was like, that's weird. Yeah. They gave it to an American, and then I didn't audition for the next season. They just asked me. So Perfect. again, when I teach, I say, they don't forget you. Yeah. If you do a good yeah. job, they will remember you, and sometimes the reward comes later. Comes much later. Yeah. I've, I've learned that too. I mean, sometimes yeah. out of the blue, something comes your way. It's like, oh, wow. Didn't I know, even where did apply that for come that. from? Yes, yeah. exactly. We are at a place where they have pretty good bagels. Would you like a bagel? I will take a toasted right. bagel, but you know what yeah, I need on it. Yeah, we'll get him over here. Okay. Yeah, what would you put on your bagel? Um, I'd say a little bit of the old heavenly spread. Would, would, you, would you put a little Is Philadelphia cream cheese on that bagel, Linda? Okay, Pete, was that in your pocket? Because I'm just can not we get a sure bagel, please? that refrigerates well in your pocket. One bagel. We brought our own cream cheese, though. <laughs> Toasted to be good. Toasted, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you passed the torch a little bit with this. Listen, with I've this done plays, yeah. and people come backstage with these things for me to sign. So. <laughs> You know what's you know what legitimately is in this one though? Cannabis. <laughs> it could be. I, it, for dogs though, I think. Yeah. What is it? Dog I, treats? Oh, it's dog hilarious. treats. Yeah. Hilarious. It's East City. You gotta you always have to have dog treats available. <laughs> right? Well listen, as we wait for, for our bagel, thank you so much for doing this. It's thank always you so a pleasure. Much, Pete. You're such a friend of, of PTBO Canada, Peterborough in general. I love and it. We'll here. do it again next year. We'll do it yearly. Cheers. All right. There Thanks. you go. Thanks. Cash, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Hometown PTBO, brought to you by Darling Insurance.